Summit, which is so uh, Mr. Yazi, Robert Yazi is our speaker that uh, uh, I was hoping uh, Dr. Dan Wildcat would uh, be here to introduce you because they are friends, they are uh, fellow educators. He's from, uh, does work with uh, Diné College. He's an attorney as well as an educator. So uh, Renee mentioned Red Lake. Some, from those of you that are from the States, uh, you remember the strong leadership of two people. If they go into the halls of that Colonial Congress in Washington, D.C., Washington, D.C., I mean, D.C., <laughs> they would actually cause a, a disruption and really make senators and uh, the House members, the Republic, everyone, everyone, they would just start feeling un uncomfortable when these two leaders come walking in. And that's Roger Jourdain, uh, who was the president. Uh, he passed on from Red Lake. And the other is who? Window Chino from the Mescalero Apache from New Mexico. Those two walk into those halls of Congress. They just, uh, they have so much power that it uh, really would be, you know, disruption to a lot of the status quo of this country. So uh, I, I just remembered those folks. So. Uh, Mr. Yazi, thank you for coming. Yat e or you like hello, Bill. But I mean, strong at the schneid or to the chin, bushes chin or shin, the shed chedo, ah, Tia Ani, the shanal. That's my mo mother's relation, my father, my uh, mother's father, my father's father. So that's who I am. So, Yat Eh, um, how's your sense of humor? Um, Indian people, I, I know, always have a sense of humor. They always like to laugh and tell funny stories. So one time uh, I met a Cree man, he said to me um, that there was a, a, an elderly man who uh, put a teepee on top of the hill and he says, from this hill I'm going to give guidance to our young men. I'm going to put a teepee there and, uh, and then in, in the teepee right in the center, I'm going to put a bag of money right here. I'm going to put uh, uh, the Bible in the middle, and I'm going to put um, the, uh, a bottle of booze on over here. <clears throat> Whoever picks up the money will mean that person has a real talent for making money. It'll be good. Uh, it'll be a, he'll be a good person to help develop the economy for the rest. And uh, he says if the person picks up the Bible, that means he's going to teach some good ethics to, our, to everybody. He's going to be a good man. But if he picks up the uh, bottle of booze, he's going to be a no good drunken bum. So a young man came in all of a sudden, and he looked at the, the three items. So what the man did is he picked up the bag of money, he picked up the Bible, and he picked up the booze and ran off. <laughs> and uh, the elder went and looked outside, and he was blazing his trail down. And he says, there goes a politician. <laughs> Is that okay? All right. I have a message. I have a declaration that the elders of the Navajo Nation have put into law in their language, not English, in the Dene language. So I'm going to read that to you and translate that same uh, declaration into English. So this, this, I think this hits the nail on the head. Uh, their declaration speaks to the issue before us. 
the rights of Mother Earth. What I want you to do is concentrate on the language. Don't think so much English. If you have a basis of your own indigenous thinking, use that as a tool to say what does it mean and how does it apply to the rights of an indigenous, uh, the rights of Mother Earth. So if we have questions, we can talk about it this afternoon. So in the declaration is in Title I of the Navajo Nation Code. It was adopted back in November 8, 2002. And it says in the Navajo language, the Navape has ani but the roots of the ne law. The yin the ne, the holy people. Sendo so the zin. Songs and prayers. Be with that. Nahasado yadashish. Nsahakes yash hatal ya. With that, earth and universe came into being with thinking. Kudo zetigini nahata yishatalya. Water and the sacred mountains came into being with planning. Nchche do nanse atas atas e. Air and many plants came into being with life. Fire, light, and sacred stones for offering came into being with resilience. Sedeti a large and hippe has ani, but says a lay nahatalia. This is the this is the foremost fundamental law set in place for us. In Saha case, a nahat ah, but says a la. Thinking is the foundation of planning. Ina esa hasen betsasala. Life is the foundation of resilience. Han hitil ya de di nhanil ya dope hatanit eh. At the time of creation. These things were put into place, and that is our makeup. These deeper nature, deeper in Hehot Olzen, by this we are known by Nihizje, our name, the ne name. Don't ne any Tliniki or clan, Nihi ne or language. Nihe o o inch our life way. Nihe chaha o our shadow. Nihe e has chin our footprints. Bik e ho tene de yin no ho ka tene ni tle. Accordingly, we are called the holy earth surface people. Ako. Tatane sado tati dale from here. From here, growth began. Life way journey proceeds. Do behas ani as a nihitha as a ani. Among us, there are different thinking, different planning, different life ways, different languages. At different laws and different beliefs. Nikibe has ani, but says a lay. Nikhi Nikhi Nelia. D. 
geht, ach die. Da, da hau an der Nacht. But the fundamental laws placed in us by the holy people remain unchanged. Ah, the nanny tlingo nasko ho ho ah ho ah. By this we remain the net forever. The kind of work we do is just what I read to you. We have traditional people, men and women, practitioners, with their ceremonies to heal people. Some speak very little English. but they speak fluent Navajo. Fluent in their thinking up here. And what they always say, pay attention to the foundation. First things first, when you think, think Fehazani, think law, as were placed by the holy people. Think of in Saha case, as a foundation to whatever you do, the planning, that life is an important element as a foundation to resilience. So in our work under with the Net College, we are told that <clears throat> we, we <clears throat> put together the Net Policy Institute. Its mission is very clear that we take this body of knowledge and we look, we read the, the policy, the laws of Navajo country, and we say, how do we <clears throat> understand this declaration? And how do we articulate that? How do we implement it? So that we can use it as a basis to make law. So what we have done, projects like uh, brain drain, food system. What do we eat 50 years ago? What are we eating today? What is it causing us? We use this language in Navajo to identify the sources, the law. How do you, what's the meaning of leadership, the planning? So I want to share this with you, or we want to share this with you, to stress the point that is very important if we talk about law, that we talk about the law that grew from our roots. That we understand what the law is trying to say and what it does not say. And that we understand how do, how do we implement this language Sometimes it's a real challenge to, to translate one word. There may not be an English word to translate that particular concept. Words like, it's easy to say respect and reverence and responsibility. But there's a word in Navajo that says, eh. You can write a book. You can explain and illustrate what that means until from the day until you until the day your life is over. That is how important these concepts are. 
in English, you just assume that you understand a word. Without question, you will begin to apply that. And we talk about rights. And I made the point yesterday that rights does not exist in the Navajo language. So what does that mean when we talk about rights of Mother Earth? But as we see when we read from this, did you understand anything? Do we understand anything about a provision that addresses the rights of Mother Earth? And if we do, what is it that we understand? Can we articulate? That is very challenging. Sometimes we, we sat down with the elders to talk about the planning. What does that mean? The resilience. We spent a whole day and we needed a whole week to talk about those four terms. So that's the kind of homework that we see before us. And our students are learning from, from us on this, on, this, on this, knowing how to use the knowledge, knowing how to use, apply the knowledge. We, d we don't know everything about Navajo knowledge. So we use the elders for guide and say, this is how we define using the word in Sahakis, the thinking. This is how we define the problem. So as we're moving toward the planning stage, let's say rights of Mother Earth, we have to say it in Navajo. And we say, what does the thinking tell us about the planning stage? Here we have to resort, use different dimensions and figure out what that Nahata is saying. It's alive. It can think. These concepts are alive. He has life has life. Let's say, if you have a concept, it's a, it's a live thing. Look what's inside. Know its purpose. Know its law. If we're talking about rights of Mother Earth, better to say, what is it that is contained within Mother Earth? What does the Mother Earth expect? Be esteemed How are they related to the water, the, the, the light, the, the things that grow, and so forth. My final point is this. We want to uh, write, we'd like to see the Navajo law written in Navajo language. Everything. And one of our leaders wished to have 88 council delegates, and he got reduced to 24. The speaker for the 88 said, we spend thousands or hundreds of thousands, thousands of dollars to retain outside consultants to use their expertise to address the problems we have here. What we need to do is take on that task ourselves. What we need to do is pick up the knowledge that we have already before us and use it as a means to resolve our own issues. So this is why I'm sharing this with you, that we see potential, a lot of potential. But some Indian nations may say, we don't have anything left. That is not true. What I just read to you, there are still holy people around. 
we still see the holy people speaking to us through water, through the fire. That's why we have to back up, to communicate, to ask for what we want, to ask for directions. Thank you, Ahehe, for, for that, for those inspiring words woven into our expression of indigenous peoples, like what you just heard, isn't just made up. It comes from spirit. You've heard the remarks from the beginning of time, or since time immemorial. In many of the expressions of indigenous peoples who have gone from our local communities to the United Nations, you see that terminology woven into the expression of indigenous peoples worldwide. So it really inspires me to, to once again see those fundamental, fundamental laws that we do have as indigenous peoples that has guided us since time immemorial. And so I'd like to give thanks on behalf of the planning committee and for this morning, for all of you that came up to, to share a part of your life. It takes courage to do that. It takes courage considering this whole, you know, effects of colonization. Because again, we're battling that almost every day, even my generation that was challenged to take this, this, uh, this responsibility one step further than my mother and my father. And then my children are taking it one step further and then their children. We hope that someday in our prayers that they will be cleansed from that oppression, from that feeling of oppression. So again, thank you for, for your presentation, Mr. Yazi, so, and all the other folks that spoke. So the food is waiting, but I'm inspired to share this song with you. This song that was passed on to me from Kitaka Yuha Mani. And it expresses what we're talking about today. We're reaching out in our expression, in our prayer, to that far place, that far place, that far place that is of light. In hopes that that voice that comes back from that place, that acknowledges what you are doing, that blesses what you are doing, and even a nod from nature, <laughs> even a nod from Grandma Earth saying, what you're doing is good, my grandchild. So after that, we're going to take a break and then go offline, I guess, for now. <coughs> you can stand. 